Hi everyone. So the other day I was on the ship for like 12 hours and I was a bit bored. So I decided to think about some improvements for Diablo 3 and came up with some pretty cool, interesting new system, I believe, that I want to present to you guys. You might have seen some of my other videos in the past talking about game improvement ideas, how to update certain things like the Paragon system, the Bounty system, etc. And this time I decided to try something entirely new. This was something I had in the back of my mind for a while in terms of like the general idea. But this time I decided to actually go through it and flesh out the entire idea. So I have an entire document here of yeah, a lot of stuff that I want to present to you guys. Before we continue, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Opera GX. Opera GX is a browser built specifically for gamers and I've been trying it out recently after they have reached out to me and I gotta say it's pretty amazing. It has lots of great features that I want to give you a brief rundown of. First of all, when you're starting to use Opera GX, you can import all of your bookmarks, browser history, passwords, cookies, etc. with the click of a button and it's all loaded into the new browser. And on top of this, you can do the same with extensions, especially those from the Chrome store. All of the extensions from Google Chrome are compatible with Opera GX and there's even more built specifically for this browser. You can also customize the layout and style of the browser with a click of a button. There are lots of cool features and themes to choose from. And you can also add a sound to your typing, which I didn't know I needed in my life. You can connect your browser directly to your Discord, Twitch, uh, WhatsApp, Messenger, etc. accounts and have them all there right on the sidebar, all in one place for you. There's also the GX player that allows you to log into your favorite music streaming services and have them run in the browser directly as well. The cool part about this is that the music will actually stop when you listen or watch something else and then resume when it's done. All in all, I have to say, I've been trying out this browser for a little bit and I've been quite impressed with those features. It feels good, it's easy to set up and it's made for gamers, which I guess all of you are. While you're at it, there's also the mobile version, GX Mobile, that you can put on your phone and obviously synchronize with everything on your PC. So go check it out. All right, let's get back to the video and go into the details. Keep in mind, this is all basically just in a brainstorming phase. So obviously nothing is set in stone. This is just some ideas I had. I wrote them down in like one hour. So just like, you know, something to think about, maybe something for the devs to consider in the future to um, just make the game better in my opinion. So the basic concept of this idea is that you awaken your set items when you use them for farming, for like doing greater rifts, etc. So you have like a little like small journey with the set that you're playing. Because most of the time when you play the season, you start your first character and you have shared paragon across your other characters. So usually make like one really strong XP farmer and then you, you know, just gear up some other builds and just don't really do much with them. You don't really progress much with them. You just push with them if you, if you like to push a lot, which is something I do, for example. And you never really get to actually farm with all those uh, like different solo pushing sets. So in my case, for example, in season 27, so far I've been pushing like 30 different sets, but I've actually only played like five different builds for, you know, T16 farming or XP farming or something like that. And all the others were just like solo push only situations basically. So I want to change that a little bit so that you kind of like play them a little bit and you earn some extra power ups as you go. Something that makes the sets more awesome, something that um, solves some of the issues that some of the sets have because I don't really think you're gonna get like, you know, a lot of reworks for a lot of mechanics anymore or just adding like some new interesting stuff that makes them more fun. So essentially as you progress with your character, you slowly level up your set and there's going to be some kind of like new UI or so that it can open. Maybe when you open your inventory and there's like, you know, some kind of like detail window and you just see like all the sets listed. And then you have like this progression saved for the entire season for all of your characters, even if you swap your items, if you swap your characters, etc. So that's kind of the idea. And to give you a better idea of what exactly I have in mind, I've actually written down a full awakening system concept for every single set in the game. So I have 35 different uh, like ideas here and I have them sorted by class. You can find the timestamps below, starting with the barbarian. So here we have the idea for the frenzy set. 
Frenzy is really cool, I believe. I think it just needs a bit more like AoE, a bit more like action. So especially with the name, the Horde of the 90 Savages, I want to see a lot of sidearms. These are like these flying axes that fly away from you when you hit enemies. That's like one of the Frenzy runes. And I want to see many more of those. Give it like some AoE. So as you farm with this especially, or maybe when you're pushing, you get like, you know, some insane like explosion of sidearms everywhere that uh, just kind of like stays more true to the name of the set. Uh, I also want to see some kind of effect where you g kind of like get more and more enraged as you attack. So some extra attack speed, uh, depending on the target's missing life, I think that would be cool. And a perma Wrath of Berserker, because why not? I think for this set in particular, this is a really cool effect. This has been requested by a lot of Barbarian players for yeah many seasons, for many builds. But I believe it fits the most here, and it would be pretty awesome. Would help with toughness, would help with CC, etc. And it would just make the whole thing way cooler. I'm not really talking specifically about like, you know, the exact numbers and like how much a set needs to be buffed. Obviously, all these things are basically buffs. So in some cases, you might actually have to tweak things down again for some of the stronger builds, for example, Tarasha or Tragul or so that are really good right now. But um, I mean, this, those balance changes can be done independent of the system, I guess. Let's move on to Earth. So Earth, I think, would have a really good use of uh, like a faster seismic slam and leap animation. Leap feels kind of slow. And there are also builds that actually don't even leap. So you already just like leap very little. So you have like some situations where you just like seismic slam or you just shout, etc. Uh, having like a higher focus on leap would prevent some of those cases and also help with the threatening shout macro or like smart uh, cast programs that um, improve the DPS beyond what it should be. So that would like, reduce the impact a little bit and would make it more smooth. Uh, earthquake single target damage is abysmal. So I have this effect here. You're gonna see this in various other sets as well, uh, where I have like some damage buff divided by the number of targets hit. So this is just to uh, yeah, make the Rift Garden fight better mostly and to maybe finish off some elites here and there. There are some other cases where you're gonna see this, where it's really needed in my opinion and just a single target buff alone is not really cutting it. And then we have um, the active Earthquake refresh and increased damage done. Again, this is supposed to prevent this insane Earthquake spamming and rather focus more on the leaping and less on those cases where you can like autocast uh, fretting shouts and war cries to get a lot of Earthquakes. Rather, you have like you know, a few that are a lot more powerful. Then you have to Immortal King. So I imagine this to be like the, the Hoda set and I gave it like Hoda powers. So first of all, the season 27 Hoda power of the Shockwave uh, on the number three. So I included some of the other season 27 powers here because they're awesome, which is also one of the original reasons that spawned this idea for this awakening system. Because I kind of wanted to preserve some of them. Here at number one, I would do something like uh, the true like Immortal King uh, ability, so to say. So when you die, you have like a cheat death. It has a very long cooldown, so you can't abuse it. Like it's like once a run, basically. And you get like 100% extra damage, 100% damage reduction. So you're truly immortal. I think that would be kind of a cool flavor. And maybe you can even time it in some cases where you proc it on demand, you know, with a power pylon or even without, you know, in a good situation. Could be pretty cool. And then also some extra single target damage here, basically, and some like, you know, ability, maybe finish off some packs. Um, it's very dearly needed for him of the Ancients, which is abysmal against few targets. Raker, uh, I think something like Fury Generation is doubled would be very helpful uh, in some cases where you have like small pulls. When you have big pulls, you usually have full Fury all the time from like one charge. I think this could be um, helped a little bit on smaller pulls and on a Rift Guardian, which is kind of like the issue of Raker. Uh, I think something like this here could be cool that you can't get like just blasted uh, when you don't have all your damage reduction effects. So Raker builds uh, focus on Relentless passive and on Esoteric Alteration and both of these kick in at 50% health and at 35% health. And before that, you're not very tanky. So it's actually quite likely that you just get annihilated from 100 to 0 pretty much if you're not super tanky from like a lot of vitality. And I would kind of want to like ease it out a little bit so that you can like slowly go into those low HP um, like values and you survive and then you try to like start out healing the, um, the incoming damage. 
And the last effect also helps with that. So while you're really low life, you get more healing. So that's more easy to like balance your life at like a um, rather low life pool between like 15% and 50% or so. So that you get the damage bonus on a set while also having a chance to stay alive at the same time. And the last barbarian set, here's the waste. So again, it has rather weak single target despite the insane bugged stricken stacking of whirlwind, dust devils. But I think that uh, also for speed farming, for example, in effect, like this would be really helpful just to like, you know, help with the leads, help with the bosses. So some extra single target. End of might last 20 seconds. So um, I think this would be a pretty cool idea. So that, for example, when you're pushing with ground stomp, you only have to do like, you know, one stomp every 20 seconds. So that allows you a bit of extra time, even through COE cycles to set up a pull more easily. Or you just have like, you know, just one interruption every once in a while where I do like a charge, for example, or a leap. And then you have the whirlwind pull effect. So this is like the season 27 theme. Um, I'm not sure if it's exactly this wording, but basically the season 27 theme. I think that really fits into the set and makes it uh, pretty cool, pretty fun. And that should be kept as well. Let's continue with the Crusader. We start with the Hammerdon, the Seeker set. So I think one of the big issues is the Faithful Memory. That's the two-handed sword that gives you extra damage depending on the amount of targets hit, up to 10. That's a really stupid mechanic that needs to be changed. Um, uh, either through this or through some permanent change. So you actually have some single target damage and you don't feel terrible whenever you start killing monsters around you because suddenly you don't have damage anymore. Then I think something like this could be cool. So enemies can be hit multiple times by the same blast hammer. That would help it with a bit of like farming so that, you know, you jump into a pool, you start blast hammering, you run away and monsters follow you and they get hit again, which just helps a little bit, I guess. And then also here a bit more like, you know, movement and fluidity. So each active blast hammer gives you extra movement speed. So I think it would be kind of cool. So when you start like uh, throwing those hammers, you can like dodge around a little bit easier and again, help with the farming. Then we have the Roland set. I really like Roland, but one issue it has again is the single target mechanic. Denial is the shield and you need five targets for it to have full effect, which is also a stupid mechanic in my opinion. So that should be uh, resolved here. So basically same thing as Seeker. Then the set usually runs Furnace and has a lot of elite damage already. And I kind of want to double down on that. I think the feel of like how you, how much faster you kill elites with the Furnace is pretty amazing. And I want to go even beyond that, make it like a true, like kind of like elite hunter kind of thing. And uh, this can also be amplified with a sea charge. Here, so it lasts twice as long and you can drag twice as many enemies. So I believe this makes it like four seconds duration and eight targets you can drag, if I'm not mistaken. So something like that would be kind of cool. So it can like, you know, just take the enemies, rush to the next pack, mow them down, take them again. Could be even better if maybe the horse would also like start dragging enemies as you go through them. Kind of like how it does um, with the Crusader in Diablo Immortal. That was kind of cool mechanic there, I believe. And maybe this could be added there as well. Then we have Akan. So this is like the newly reworked set for Condemn. Uh, I think that we need something like this here just to uh, incentivize doing smaller pulls a little bit more because of the extreme lags that this build has. So I don't really see another rework coming for it. And this would help with that a bit. And also the single target is not the greatest anyway. I think something like this could be interesting. So I have like an extra armor buff depending on how many times you've cast Akarat's Champion lately. So this would help with the insane squishiness that the build has and also has like some kind of like up and down in your toughness. So as you start a pull, you're very squishy. You cast Akira's Champion a lot because you keep procking uh, all over uh, all the time and then you get tankier and tankier and you don't have to cast it that much. And then you become squishier and squishier again and it kind of like repeats back and forth. So kind of interesting. And I think some other cool effect also would help with the toughness a lot would be to gain all active and passive effects of all laws. There's a lot of stuff in there, especially damage reduction. You're going to be very tanky with that, actually, so maybe that's too much. Maybe there could be like some other nerf to the set or so on some other point. But I kind of like the idea of having all the sets. You get movement speed, you get damage reduction, you get resource reduction, you get crit, and there's attack speed. So lots of really interesting, cool things, I believe, that would kind of like fit in there, I believe. Then we have the Valor set. So I think Valar definitely needs some toughness. So I have an Iron Skin effect here. Iron Skin duration and effects are doubled. So that means you get 75% uh, damage reduction, I guess. So 50 and then 50 again. 
Um, the duration would be kind of helpful. So you have like pretty much permanent. And uh, for example, if you have Iron Skin Flash, you get this extra movement speed. It would be cool to have this extra movement speed doubled as well. So you go like really fast, especially for like the Fist of the Heavens, um, like speed farming build, that would be kind of cool. Speaking of which, I want to apply this damage bonus on a two piece as well to the Fist of the Heavens. Right now it only buffs Heaven's Fury, and that's a bit sad. And Fist of the Heavens can definitely need a big buff. And then we have Akrat's Champion cooldown reduced by 30 seconds just to help with, you know, potentially some setups where you can make it like permanent or near permanent at least and uh, have like a way easier time um, stacking the cooldown reduction to reach like a good value here on Akrat's Champion. Invoker is the last build on Crusader. So I think this should be like a combo between Slash and Punish. Uh, this was something I suggested originally for the rework, but there was no change to it, unfortunately. So I put it here. Basically, I want to get all the runes. There's like some, lots of small, cool stuff, like you can get extra armor, extra attack speed, extra block. Yeah, some nice little stuff. You get bigger radius for Slash. So you have like this one AoE skill, Slash, and you have Punish as a single target skill, which is also further amplified by uh, this ability here. So Punish gives basically triple damage compared to Slash so that you can kind of decide, you know, depending on the pull, do you want to Slash for AoE or do you want to Punish like the Yellow Elite or something to um, deal extra damage to that one. And uh, we free up this extra skill slot by adding Bombardment here. So you just get it basically for free. And this also gives you like a bit of like back and forth when you usually don't use Punish that uh, for example in a big pull when you just like slash 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 you would do punish at least once in a while uh, through the bombardment so you get like this damage reduction effect from the four piece bonus on invoker next up is the demon hunter let's start with unhold essence multi shot is like one of my favorite builds of all time basically and i want to make it even more awesome so let's start off with all runes so there's like um, extra uh, cost reduction and um, extra damage the rockets the chill there's also the knockback, which I can think kind of fits with the whole like ranged theme of the set. Maybe you can even think about adding something like strong arm bracers in there. Could be kind of cool. Then we have uh, the two piece here. So this is some kind of like stacking damage mechanic, which I believe also fits pretty well to multi shot. You kind of like, you know, start mowing through the targets. You start like piercing through them with the arrows and they take like more damage basically. And that would make it like kind of cool for pushing, I believe. And then I have this effect here, which I believe would make it even more awesome. So you have like an active like DPS button that you can press. Preparation is included in Multishot set anyway. And it's usually not really pressed for anything. It's just there as like a stat stick skill basically for the 20 discipline. And I would like to be able to use it and, you know, get some big burst out of it. So you have like a small cone. So when you have only like, you know, a few targets left or so, and suddenly you have like an insane, like, you know, Gatling gun attack speed, like you know, 12 attacks per second or something, you know, that would be pretty awesome. Here's the Gold Demon Hunter. So number one is uh, momentum. So usually when you start a run, you have zero momentum. I want to reverse that. I want you to start at 20 momentum. And whenever you go to like a new area or so, for example, in bounties, that would make it just more smooth and also make it disappear slower so that it can just like hold the button more, just like, you know, keep cruising for a while. And then, you know, every uh, so often you shoot a hanging arrow and you're going to be uh, fine. So I think it's what make it more smooth, more fun. Uh, I gave you some da range damage reduction. God Demon Hunter is not exactly very tanky. And uh, I think you should be incentivized to stay away from melee enemies, but it needs some range damage reduction in that case. So I put it here. And then I have some extra damage. So hanging arrow goes twice as far and can pierce twice as many targets. So the reason why I did this here mostly is that you actually get all those extra pierces on single targets so that the boss skills don't suddenly take forever because the AoE damage is like way higher from piercing more targets. And this would kind of like just give it more damage but also feel better. So when you fight like bigger packs of enemies, the arrow actually manages to get a bit more into the pool and do a bit of air damage in the middle and stuff like that, which I guess would help. The, the feel of the build a lot because right now it's like you have a big pull when you're pushing and you shoot your arrow and just like it hits a brick wall basically as soon as it arrives because it only has four pierces. Here's the Natalia. I think this set should be revamped anyway very soon and uh, obviously it should go towards like a Reign of Vengeance type of set and I added some extra effects that I would like to see. 
So first of all, you get Thief Rune, so you don't have any hatred issues, which kind of fits with Natalia's Vengeance, you know, the whole theme. Uh, some extra movement speed, so it feels a little bit less clunky, a little bit more like God. And then we have the second one. So when you cast Vengeance, you also gain a bunch of Vein of Vengeance around the target. So let's say like five casts or something like that. So you can use the Vengeance activation as like some, you know, targeted nuke basically. And then we have a bit of like a damage stacking mechanic. Again, similar to the multi-shot, I think especially for pushing scenarios, this would feel pretty good where it kind of like stacks up the damage over time as you hit them with more and more arrows so that they have some extra damage there. Here's Marauder. Overall, I really like the way that Marauder works generally, but it's not really like a good farming setup. So I want to change that. First of all, no cost or cooldown for sentries. So you can put them anywhere all the time and don't have to worry about anything. You get like plus one sentry and you get two sentries per cast. So you have six total then. So you have to do three casts. Instead of right now, you have to do five casts. And uh, I think this would make it also more smooth to uh, not like spam the button all the time. And then also give it extra speed when there is no sentry in 30 yards. So I was thinking about doing some stuff with fair companions here, but I think like the easiest solution is something like this. So you can just like deploy your sentries far away and then you can run away or you just like run away from your sentries and then you get this boost so that you can go from pack to pack a bit more easily make a pull more easily and just helps overall with the play style. And lastly, we have the shadow set. So I have some uh, kind of rework here a little bit. So let's start with number one. You get a dam you get attack speed and damage reduction. So I think um, more attack speed helps with the build, you know, make it feel smooth. And uh, damage reduction is very needed on this build as well. It's not exactly tanky. So just uh, is, uh, to help with that. Then we have the translucent. I think the shadow power, you know, making you a bit like, you know, transparent and uh, able to you know, move for enemies with the loosey boots effect, basically. Uh, that would be kind of cool. So you can position yourself to hit exactly the target you want at all times. You're already pretty fast on the extra movement speed. And that would be pretty cool to have. And then finally, I also want to add pen of knives into the build. So that's another reason why I gave it some extra damage reduction. So you free up like a, like a skill slot and uh, you can use Fan of Knives now and you get like extra impales. So you use Fan of Knives and when you kill them after that, it, it like releases extra knives in all directions, like an explosion. And you know, you deal like, let's say like maybe five casts worth of impales uh, in like a random direction or something, or maybe towards enemies. So to give it some AOE, give it a bit of a combo with the knife, you know, skills with the impale and the Fan of Knives and that could, it could be pretty cool in my in my imagination. Let's continue with the monk. So Udiana, I think first of all, the season 27 theme effect is really awesome. That should stay, especially because it solves a lot of the single target issues that the build has. Then I have this one here. So Mythic Rhythm is always like a big point of um, yeah, discussion, I guess, for Udiana. So I was just like straight up apply it to all palms. You know, doesn't matter if they're auto proc, if they're manual cast or whatever. Just give it for free basically so that this issue is solved and also give it more cyclone strike so um bigger radius and you can hit more targets so right now cyclone strike always pulls exactly 16 enemies maximum so that could be increased to 32 which might make cyclone strike just like more useful and with the implosion radius being quite large and doubled you can really have some really big pulls and then blow them up with um, the big palms which is really the best part of with the monk Here's Raymond. So we start with lots of spirit cost reduction. So there are two reasons for that. Number one is Captain Crimson set. You get 75% damage reduction, which is set really neat. And you also have uh, the ability to just like use Cycle Strike more freely, use dashes more freely because they do cost spirit. And uh, it kind of feels very bad when you have to dash around and then you lose your Shenlong buff. So this would help a lot with this. Then there's Combination Strike. That's a passive. Right now that adds, uh, I think, 10% additive damage when you use um, a different generator. And I want to buff that. And I want to also give it damage reduction so that maybe you can drop one or two skills and get more generators in your build. So you have like two or even three generators and you can combine those effects to deal more damage, get some damage reduction. So you have like a bit of like a, you know, martial arts combo kind of build where you use different skills. And lastly, I also want to include Lashing Tail Kick. So basically you get like stacks when you hit enemies 
And depending on how big the pull is that you're hitting, you get it faster or slower. And then you can use lashing tail kick as kind of like a finisher. So this should work something similar to the flail of the ascended on the crusader with shield bash. So there's an item that uh, deals damage when you use shield glare, depending on the last five shield bashes. So something like that basically, so that you have like some big, you know, roundhouse kick finisher. And I think this would make Raymond way more fun, you know, way more dynamic to play. So you make like a large pull and you kind of thin it out. You get those 100 stacks, you roundhouse kick and you blast the elite. And uh, yeah, it's just, I imagine this would be kind of cool. Here's the inner build. So I think inner overall works pretty well. So I tried to think of like some like minor improvements that would help it a bit. Number one, water allies are always in their active form. Number two, fire allies remain split until they explode. So this is still an issue sometimes that they split and then, you know, everything might die around you and then they like transform back. So just have them not lose any damage basically. Uh, then I have this here. So we get like an attack speed buff uh, and I made it quite significant. The reason for that is that there is um, basically an inner pushing strategy that is not really supposed to be in the game where you TP out of the rift and you try to get flying dragon procs and squirt stacks and then you TP back in again. And uh, you can like do like one big power nuke and then TP out again back and forth all the time. So that's really stupid. And I want to prevent this with like a stacking bonus basically. And here, I don't know, I was kind of uninspired for last effect because inner is already so well rounded. I just gave it a bunch of extra cooldown reduction to make it feel smoother. Here's Sunboku. I wasn't really sure exactly which direction to go with Sunboku because it's a very generic set. It has three different skills and buffs. And we already included Lashing Tail Kick and Arraignment here. And we have Tempest Rush on POJ. And we have Wave of Light. So this could be maybe like a dedicated Wave of Light build. But I wanted to keep it kind of generic. So I just gave it like a bunch of like damage buffs, damage reduction buff, and like, you know, easier resource management, which is a big issue on Sunboku and more damage buff. So this could even be some kind of like, you know, group support thing or something like that. With like uh, the clones giving you a bit of extra damage against few targets because the clones don't really hit like a big pull. They only hit like a few targets. So you also get more out of this buff on smaller pulls so they have better single target damage. And lastly for the monk, we have the justice set here. So I think it would be cool if uh, you're tempest rushing with higher speed and you get some damage reduction because it's also not super tanky. Then one big issue that the build has, especially when you're pushing, is that when you get CC'd, you get like feared, vortex, whatever, uh, you lose your flurry stacks, so your entire nuke is basically gone. And I think that should be uh, prevented. So there's like a two second like persist basically, because when you open a covers map, you instantly have to leave the game because you have to kick doors every three seconds and then you lose your flurry stacks. You can do nothing on that map. So this needs to change. And uh, I was thinking about a better way to uh, like prevent abuse for this basically, where you just like do explosions over and over with full stacks. And I just have it like this so that you don't actually get an explosion at all until you cast Blinding Flash and then you remove all your flurry stacks. Maybe that's a better way to do this. And lastly, I think it would be pretty awesome, for example, to play around uh, Squirt Snacklers and stuff like that would be just to give like Serenity one second longer duration. Let's continue with the Necromancer, starting with Pestilence. So number one here is uh, five corpses for three per second. This could be another value, but I think something like this would be okay to have some kind of like more permanent like auto lancer feel. You can use Devour to give up your resource cost reduction and your corpses for pauldrons. You get a bit of random damage here and there. So something like this would be pretty awesome for Pestilence, I believe. Uh, then we have Land of the Dead cooldown reduced. Maybe 60 seconds is a bit too much. So I basically want to have like these up and down phases where I use Land of the Dead kind of frequently to do like a big nuke. And then you have a bit of free damage all the time and also keep up your buffs. And then I also have this here so that the random lances actually deal a bit more damage so that you can target nuke one enemy with the uh, like manual lances while also spamming the devourer for example and getting all the random um, lances in all directions. And that would be a pretty cool, like, you know, awesome combo between AOE and single target, I believe. Here's the Rafma. So Rafma has a big issue that it has no toughness and it's very slow. So I want to solve both these things. Uh, number one for farming, you get a movement speed when you kill enemies for three seconds. And it also reduces the cooldown of Army of the Dead by a bunch. So for example, while farming, you don't really get like a lot of resets 
from your minions hitting enemies because everything is dead. And then you have to go to the next pool very slowly and then you wait until they hit. So I kind of want to, you know, make it more fluid. Then you have a bunch of damage reduction here. So 10% uh, for each cast of army that you have done in the past 30 seconds, up to 60 sec uh, up to 60%. Yeah, I think 60% extra damage reduction would definitely be somewhere in like the acceptable range for uh, Rafa to not feel like absolutely awful when you're pushing. And lastly, we have this problem that on Rafma there is an exploit and uh, apparently it's not getting fixed. So I want to fix it with this. Basically, uh, you start a greater rift, you go out of the greater rift, you kill some you know easy enemies in T16, revive them and go back to the greater rift. So when pushing, this is an insane time save of like a minute plus if you do that and that should be prevented. So that uh, when you don't have any revives or when you don't have full revives, at the start of a run, you just uh, get random skeletons basically, so that you have your full power at the start. And then you can start killing enemies and you can revive whatever you want. Here's Tragul. So I guess everyone knows that Death Nova has zero single target damage despite the Funerary Pig rework. But Blood Tide Blade is just too strong for AoE and we need like even more damage for single target. So I have again this divided by number of targets hit effect. So I don't have to save like, you know, two pylons for the boss every single time when you're pushing. And you can also kind of farm with it now. And then simulacrums are invincible. I think that would be kind of helpful to just like not have them randomly die because that was incredibly frustrating when I was playing this build. Even with higher paragons, they would die sometimes and you don't even notice it. And then you have Blood Rush allows you to move your enemies for two seconds. So just like a short illusory boots effect with the same duration of Blood Rush potency so that you also know how long it is. Here's scenarios, uh, same issue with single target. So we gave it a, a juicy bonus here. And then again, Simulacrums have uh, the issue that they also need to be positioned way better than for example, Nova. So I gave them also like illusory boots effect and also make them unable to be targeted. So that helps with their survival. So this would just have them like, you know, next to you at all times, basically, and allow them to swing where you swing. And then we have Bone Storm, like the Inarius set bonus, and the Scythe radius increased by 50%. So I think Inarius as like the melee set with the Bone Storm and the Grim Scythe is like a really good combo. So if they ever do a rework or maybe just a buff, then I guess it should be the Scythe set. So this is why I went with this direction here. And then we have, lastly, the Masquerade. So Bone Spear has a few issues. Most importantly, it's very weak, but also the single target is atrocious. And I think it could have, you know, a bit more like fluidity for farming. So no essence cost for Bone Spear and Bone Armor lasts five minutes. This just allows you to spam Bone Spears a lot more in all directions when you're farming. That should help a lot. Then we have a lot of attack speed here that uh, only procs when you hit elite enemies. And this helps with stricken stacking, for example, and just more single target damage on the boss. You lose one stack every two seconds. So when you're not fighting elites, you lose it again so that it has a bit of you know better uptime on the walls, for example. And lastly, after hitting an enemy with bone armor, you gain high resistance movement speed for one second so that you can like press bone armor and like rush away at high distance for Zays and for serration bonuses and get a better nuke. So this would be pretty awesome here. Here's the Witch Doctor. Let's start off with Mundunugu. Again, single target damage on Spear Brush is atrocious. Boss fights are like eight minutes, so that needs to change. Then we have Big Bird Voodoo or Runes. I think that's kind of awesome for like this whole like Voodoo set and the whole theme that it has. And Pianado pull radius is increased to 40 yards. So after playing Mundunugu in season 27 and clearing 150 of it, I think this higher pull radius is, is really awesome. And we should have something similar to like the season 27 power at least in the game. And that would be pretty cool. Here's Sunimasa. Sunimasa overall works pretty well, but number one, it's extremely squishy. And number two, it's very dependent on kills for hacking fury stacks. So I want to solve both these issues a little bit here with the number one. Then we have uh, fetishes teleport to you from a shorter distance. So this will just help you to always get the, um, the fetishes to shoot where you want them to shoot, because sometimes um, the, your closest fetishes are like half a screen away anyway. So I just want to leash them way shorter so that they are closer to you and protect you as meat shields and shoot where you want to. And poison dots are larger. So just make them like, a, you know, a bit bigger, a bit wider so that they actually hit more targets because they're like, you know, very, very narrow. And yeah, it's kind of hard to do AOE damage sometimes. Here's Helltooth. 
Uh, I wanted to keep it like generic between zombie bears and gargantuans, so I have a bonus for both here. Number one issue for zombie bears is they get stuck everywhere, so I think it's just like so straight up go through all the walls, go through wall the it's um you know all that stuff, all the obstacles, because it's very annoying to play anything that's not like um a huge fields of misery. Uh, gargantuans have the issue they kind of don't really do what you want them to do. So they are commanded to attack where you cast Wall of Death. So that kind of like go there and attack enemies around the area. Then you have like some generic damage buff. Again, could be like used for like some support action even or something like that. And uh, again here we have like some defensive buff as well. So I kind of kept it generic here. And we have like the individual bonuses there for this two different builds. Here's Jade. Uh, personally, I really like Jade. But it does have some issues. Number one, kind of similar to uh, Leapquake, is the auto casting and the um, auto casting programs basically. So uh, the faster you cast Solar Harvest, the more damage you deal. I want to prevent that a little bit. So with this number two effect here, you kind of get like a stacking effect for your next Soul Harvest. And you don't have to like spam it all the time. You can time it a little bit more until the pull is made better. And it also has like this bigger like nuke feel. So I think this is something that um, was part of it in the past where you, you know, set up your dots and then you press soul harvest and boom. And uh, with this like spammy play style that it has these days, that's not really the case anymore. So I think this number could even be higher so that you get like, you know, a true, um, like, you know, huge burst of damage basically. All the effects of Soul Harvest are doubled, so you already get all runes, and now you get like even more stuff. There's like extra movement speed, and extra mana gain, and extra life, I believe, and extra armor. So um, extra armor in particular would be quite helpful, extra int as well, because the build is not very tanky. So yeah, stuff like that makes it more smooth. And then you have a bit of like, you know, help for few targets. So when there's five targets or less, you get 80% attack speed. So it helps a lot on the boss to stack stricken, for example. It helps to reset soul harvest faster, etc. So you can like spam, 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 and do more damage. Here's Arakia. Um, Arakia has three big issues, and I want to try to solve all of them. Number one is the damage reduction from the spider web. It's four seconds right now, which is terrible. So you lose it all the time, very easily. When you run from pull to pull, or even when you're pushing and you play very slowly and very carefully, it just drops all the time. So this should be way longer. Then we have the fact that farming of it is very slow, mostly because you run from pack to pack, and then you find a pack, and then you start throwing spiders, and it takes like five seconds to even start doing any damage because they kind of need to stack up, and they need to start hitting, they need to start stacking the belt. So I want to have the Spider Queen like summon a bunch of spiders for you whenever you find a new pack. And then the third issue is the insane lag that the build has. So I also want to prevent that. So when you have 50 or more, or when you have 50 spiders, you don't actually get more spiders, but instead you refresh the duration and buff the damage a little bit so that you don't really nerf this build, but uh, you basically like keep throwing spiders and you just buff the existing spiders instead of like lagging out. This build has so many spiders that you can actually lag out on single target with this as a boss killer. So this is how bad it is. And um, yeah, that should probably help a little bit. Maybe this number could be even lower. And lastly, here's the wizard. So we have DMO. Uh, first of all, I really like the frozen orb effect of season 27. That should be here. So you should kind of like shoot like a barrage of uh, frozen orbs every once in a while. That's pretty cool. And uh, I think there could be like some other like, you know, time wizard kind of effects here. So I gave it um, the slow time lingers on you for three seconds after exiting. So this would mean when you have like the runes that give you extra attack speed or the cooldown reset for teleport. So you can kind of like, you know, teleport, 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 and then go to the next pack and get another bubble and then keep going. That would make it feel more smooth, especially on farming. And then also you get like some attack speed or extra damage here after teleporting. So um, yeah, something like that could be pretty cool as well. So that it's like, you know, more based around this whole teleporting and slow time theme. Here's Firebird. Uh, Firebird has some issues right now. Number one is the best Firebird build is actually a cold build with Meteor, so that needs to be fixed. So the Ignite damage in particular needs to be way buffed. So I did that. And number two is the Insane Lags, especially on larger pulls. And uh, I did that with this number three effect. So here we just get like more Ignite damage. So as enemies burn, they take more and more damage. So they kind of like burn brighter and brighter, so to say. Uh, combustion dissipates slower, so that's just like to make it more smooth and you can attack more. 
and then you have ignite damage that is improved and divided by the number of ignited enemies so that you don't actually want to ignite like you know 100 targets or something like that and start lagging but instead you have like you know small pulls blast them down move on and just have like a more fluid playstyle. here's tarasha i mean tarasha is extremely powerful and i think that you have to be careful here but number one is like just more mobility so you have like three charges of teleport that would be pretty cool and especially with the wormhole rune you can do up to six teleports and then you reset it once which does make it more smooth especially with the staff playstyle. number two that's basically a different version of this magic missile power so you just get a lot of your missing arcane power when you hit an enemy with a signature spell so we don't necessarily have to preserve this like 10 magic missile power for this or it could be preserved but for a different build and you just get like a bit more like um, options here with which signature spell you're gonna use to uh, preserve the star pack playstyle. and lastly power hungry so um this kind of goes with this basically i want to keep it as like a ranged playstyle as much as possible so you're like far away you throw meteors and boom and uh, power hungry um yeah allows you to combine it with zays and you have uh, lots of damage while far away from targets this would also prevent you from for example using uh spectral blade barrier blades to like easily get shields all the time because you have to be far away so you have to figure out your shields in another way here's typhon i think number one issue is the low mobility so i think the base cooldown could be reduced way down to like around four seconds for example so that would make it kind of fluid so you can teleport you know every once in a while at least you don't need to have like perma teleport like crazy on every single set but typhon is really lacking mobility uh, then fighters no longer lose heads when you take damage i think that's kind of important because usually you try to be shielded at all times and if your shields ever break for some reason you're basically dead because of how the damage reduction scales you have 80 percent damage reduction and suddenly you lose eight percent so you take almost like um, a third more damage or something from the first head they lose two seconds later you lose another head you're almost at like double damage taken in the matter of two seconds after your shields break and you're basically dead and you can't even get your shields back very easily so that should be maybe changed a little bit and then i kind of like the idea of having like a bigger black hole radius as well kind of similar to the piranado and you have like you know a massive pole and everything gets in there and you blast it down with the hydras that would be pretty cool and here's the last one so this is veer so i think there are some issues on veer number one is the spam of the archon blast while in archon form so you have to spam number one in like a one second tact all the time again allows for um, automation and macros and stuff so that should be prevented uh so we have here it has like a 20 second base cooldown with typical cooldown values that will probably be something like four or five seconds or so on the beer build so you press it once in a while you get like a small damage buff then you get a few extra archon stacks when entering archon same with the Vazula build just to give it more toughness give it more damage and again reduce the dependency on this archon blast ability reduce the dependency on on kills so that you actually have better like boss damage for example as well and you don't really have to fish for like exactly the right monster types when you're pushing and lastly i want to give it an extra ability because there's one empty slot in an archon build so this could be again some kind of like uh yeah some split between enemy type of effect so uh, some forked blast you know i imagine some kind of like you know slam in a cone shape or something like that that uh, deals damage in front of you that would be pretty cool to uh, like uh just add to the arsenal of the uh, and we are built yeah and that's actually it so this was all the sets that we have in the game at least all the uh, six piece class sets or seven piece class sets and um i didn't really do anything for like lod or you know like the crafted sets or something like that which i believe you know are not really needed uh, to be like changed in such a way this could be done with other ways but i think that yeah there is a lot of potential for a lot of sets in the game to make them more awesome to solve a lot of the issues they have especially in like farming scenarios or so and maybe this also inspires some of you guys to bring forward some of your own ideas maybe you're gonna see some such a system in the future who knows i'm quite hopeful about you know the future development cycle still for the apple theme I believe we're still going to see some pretty big updates for the game at least for a while and let's see how it goes but this was just uh, you know some stuff as i mentioned that i came up with in 
a little amount of time. I didn't really like, you know, think every scenario through. I was just thinking about, you know, basically the weaknesses that every single set has and I tried to solve them and come up with some pretty cool effects that are interesting. Let me know what you think. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Maybe you think, um, you know, the, uh, the way that this would be acquired could be changed to something more interesting. Or, you know, maybe you have some ideas for certain sets or certain effects. Let me know. And I'm quite excited to hear them. That's it for now. Hope you liked it. And see you guys next time.